Let me ask you, have you ever lied to someone? Have you ever stolen or lusted or said God's name in vain? My heart beats for you guys, so I want to give you the truth. If you've done any of those things, you've officially broken the law. But what law am I talking about? The Ten Commandments are God's moral law, and I only referred to four of them so far. If you've broken the law of God, then you're in danger, because God is perfect in justice, and justice will be served. People are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. Think about this, if you died tonight, would you be innocent or guilty in God's eyes? This is so important to answer for your life right now. You and I are both lawbreakers in the sight of God. There's no avoiding that. So we're very much guilty, aren't we? A massive mistake people make is assuming that, because God sees all actions, surely their good actions outweigh the bad, right? Well, if you think about it, that's not at all how justice works. Imagine you're in a courtroom, and you see a criminal go up to the stand and say, You're right, judge. I did run over that woman while drunk driving, but I donated to the Red Cross hundreds of times, so you should just let me go. At that moment, you'd probably raise your eyebrow in confusion of what he just said. The judge will then say, We're not judging you for the good you've done, but for the bad. So with that said, answer this for yourself. Do guilty people go to heaven, or do they go to hell? Does that bother you or concern you? Many people try to explain it away, but that doesn't remove its existence. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Please understand guys that I had to say this because I desperately love you guys. If someone you love is heading into danger, you'd rush without a second's hesitation to warn them. In the same way, please understand that your soul is in danger. Thankfully God made a plan to save you from your upcoming punishment. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. I'm sure you've heard that Jesus, the Son of God, died for you, but people don't really know what it means. It's simple. We broke God's moral law, but Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court and are charged to pay $10 million, that's going to be real tough to pay off. But if someone pays it off for you, the judge can say, it's all paid for, you're out of here. And that's legal and just. You didn't have to pay a dime because someone did it for you. So understand this, we've got an infinite price to pay for our crimes against an infinitely good God. But his son Jesus paid the fine in full so that we don't have to. If then we reject Jesus until we die, that means we've chosen by our free will that we're still going to pay the full price ourselves. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to be saved, all you must do is repent and trust in Jesus alone. It's that simple. Repenting simply means turning away from your sins. Think of it. If a guy says he's a flat earther, then shows you all the globes in his office and talks about how he's gone around the globe, you'd scratch your head. That's no flat earther. In the same way, we can't just say we've chosen Christ if we're still deep in our sins. Trusting in Jesus is like putting on a parachute, because when you fall off a plane, that parachute's going to be the only thing that'll save your life. Jesus is the eternal parachute, so put your full trust into him alone. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. A major error people have is thinking that their good deeds will earn their way to heaven, but that doesn't add anything, and in fact, it makes you condemned. If you put your trust into your own deeds to get to heaven, then you're not putting your full trust in Christ. This is so important because so many people will live good lives, thinking that it'll save them, but then realize it never added a single ounce to their salvation, and then it's too late. If you make the decision to give your life to Christ right now, you have eternal life. By truly believing in him, you'll be given the Holy Spirit, which will transform your heart into loving righteousness instead of evil. You guys have been suffering for so long now, trying to fight depression, suicide, guilt, shame, hatred, anxiety. I will say without a shadow of a doubt that there is victory over each of these, and his name is Jesus. You've been living life on your own terms, but if you live life on Christ's terms, the Holy Spirit will fill you with power, energy, love, endurance, and happiness that lasts. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
The best part is you can instantly have this eternal life. Make the decision right here and now that you're gonna repent and trust in him. Guys, you really can't wait a second longer. Don't procrastinate on it. And thank you guys for listening. Please share this with anyone you care about. I love you guys, and Jesus loves you so much more. So thank you guys, really.